everyone and welcome back to the Blackford Book Club for volume 19 of my Liverpool Football Club The Retro Series. This 19th volume in my continuing series of retrospective match reports on a decades old Liverpool game takes us to Goodison Park, home of City neighbours Everton and for an FA Cup semi-final replay with bitter Northwest rivals Manchester United. This volume is also a companion piece to the original semi-final from four days earlier played at Main Road, Manchester, whereby the two teams shared four goals in a thriller for the ages. As was custom in this bygone age, the semi-final itself was played at a neutral venue, and after the draw four days earlier, the teams met again, and again, as was customary in 1979, a replayed semi-final, and one which would send the Red Devils of United to Wembley to face Arsenal in the FA Cup final. There are three notable changes from the original semi-final of just four days earlier. The first and most notable is the pitch, and whereas the main road surface of four days ago was dreadful and a mud heap so typical of the times, the Goodison Park pitch is much more even and in a far better playing condition. The other two changes are personnel, with Steve Highway in the starting eleven for Liverpool and Jimmy Case replacing him on the substitutes bench, and Brian Greenough replaced from the original game in the replay by Lou Macari. The rest of both teams are a who's who of late 1970s footballing nostalgia, with goalkeepers Ray Clements and Gary Bailey, captains Emin Hughes and Martin Buchan in central defence, and a continuing combined attacking talent including wingers Steve Highway for the Reds and Steve Coppel and Mickey Thomas for United all of whom tried to eke out chances for their Scottish international forwards in the guise of the pugnacious and gritty Joe Jordan for United and the gloriously tricky skills of Kenny Dalglish for Liverpool. 53,069 lucky souls were inside Goodison Park to see a first half dominated by United, both sides crashing headers against their opposition's crossbar and finally, with just 13 minutes left to play, Jimmy Greenoff sent his Red Devils to Wembley for the FA Cup final. His team undoubtedly created the greatest goal threat in a first half they largely dominated and Liverpool had their goalkeeping legend Ray Clements to thank for getting them to half-time level at 0-0. Clements rushed from his goal line on three separate occasions to deny a brilliant run and shot from Lou Macari, a goal mouth scramble that looks certain to be an opening goal for United, as well as perhaps his finest save or more correctly, a brilliant double save. A mistake from Phil Thompson allowed Joe Jordan to bear down on his goal, but Clements rushed to smother his shot, and with the ball running loose, he snaffled it from the foot of Steve Coppel as he tried to round the goalkeeper for a simple tap-in to an empty goal. Even when Clements was finally beaten, his crossbar came to his rescue. A curling cross from Sammy McElroy was deflected by Liverpool's Terry McDermott, wrong-footing his defence entirely. Joe Jordan rose unchallenged to thump a header past Clements but against the underside of his crossbar before the Liverpool defence hacked the ball away to safety. Mere minutes later the Reds of Liverpool would replicate this and with their only noteworthy goal-scoring chance of the first half. Phil Neal's curling ball into the centre of the United penalty area bounced in between Steve Coppel and Lou Macari allowing Ray Kennedy to do what he, what he did best in that era or any generation you care to mention. In the footballing vernacular he ghosted in, unnoticed, into an attacking space and with the ball bouncing high and favourably he arrived perfectly on time to head her powerfully past a thoroughly beaten Gary Bailey but the ball crashed against the underside of the crossbar before being hacked away to safety. But with 13 minutes left, an extra time and a possible second replay looming, Jimmy Greenoff gleefully and excitedly sent his team to Wembley. Goal! Liverpool nil, Manchester United won. Greenoff, 77 minutes. Jimmy Greenoff, would you believe it? Gary Bailey sent a long kick forward to be met with a typical knocked down header by Joe Jordan. His header finds Mickey Thomas running forward and with a deft left-footed cross bypassing every Liverpool defender, Jimmy Greenoff stoops to conquer with a perfectly placed header that evades Ray Clements in the Reds' goal. 
As BBC commentator of the day, John Motson exclaims he cannot believe it. It's Jimmy Greenoff again, and with yet another important and invaluable goal for his team. His goal would send them to Wembley for the 1979 FA Cup final with Arsenal, and a game that would then become known as the Sunderland final, after United come from two goals down to level the final 2-2 late on, before Sunderland would score an unbelievable winner for Arsenal with just a minute to go. And that was a bittersweet volume 19 of Liverpool Football Club The Retro Series in support of my self-published book Chasing the Impossible and A Sword of Damocles. It's the book on Liverpool Football Club I've always wanted to write. It's a book I'm immensely proud of. Go on, treat yourself to any Christmas. I'll leave you in peace and in solidarity. Go on, buy the book. And I'll thank you once again for watching. Peace, everyone.